Hello, I'm Mavis Warner, a volunteer with the Woodlands Lives and Landscapes Project and I'm researching Beacons Bottom, which is a small hamlet high up in the Chilterns near Stoken Church, where the main occupation for men in the past was bodging, which is the local name for wood turning, and for the women it was lace making. A short recording has been found of a 1957 interview between John Mays and Bert White, who is known locally as the last bodger of Beacons Bottom. Bertram Harry White, who is also known as Harry White, was born in Bacon's Bottom, as it was then called, on the 8th of January 1887, the son of Harry and Mary White. He had one sister and seven brothers. Bert married Clarice Whiting in 1910, and in their early married life they lived in Stoken Church before moving in 1921 to Water End, the next hamlet to Beacon's Bottom, where he named their property Club at Cottages, which you can see in this picture. The name was a clever combination of his and his wife's names. While they lived in number one, their old daughter and her husband eventually moved into number two. In 1940, H.J. Massingham wrote in his book Chilton Country, Water End is now poxed with bungalows all over it, but at Beacon's Bottom close by, a slit in the uplands, a bodger, White, still turns his chair legs. The interesting thing about White's hovel is that it is thatched and there is more thatch in this region than any other known to me in the Chilterns. Bert and Clarice had two daughters and, by some strange coincidence, one married a Mr Wood and the other a Mr Turner. Bert was still living at number one club at Cottages when he died on the 25th of January 1970. He was buried in Stoken Church Cemetery on the 29th of January. Bert came from a family of wood turners and he talks about helping his father when he was a lad before progressing to work on his own account. The photo shows Bert outside his hut with some visitors. Being in a valley, the lane was prone to flooding and his piles of chair legs were often washed away before being rescued by the boys from the school further down the lane. When did you start work, Mr White? When I was 12, 12 and a half years old. And were you working with your father then? Yes. Uh, what doing then? What, what were you doing then? Uh, doing the odd jobs for a star. And what was your father by trade? Uh, chair turner. Chair turner? Uh -huh. Did he work in the woods or had he got a place? No, he, he worked in the shop where I'd been just pulled down. He worked in that little thatch shop yeah, where you'd yeah. been for so long. Yeah. Now, uh, at what age did you start turning yourself? <laughs> well, I think about 15 years old. What year was that roughly when you started turning? When you were 15, how old are you now? In my 70s. You're in your 70s now, so that was about 55 years ago mm. when you started to turn. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, how long ago was it since you started working on your own, working for yourself, as it were? Uh, since the First World War. Since the First World War. Mm. And would you be turning with a pole lathe then? No. Wheel lathe? Wheel lathe. Most turners in the area use the pole lathe, but the wheel lathe was said to be faster and save space. The next photograph shows Bert teaching some evacuees from the youth camp, which was up the road at Horsley's Green. Now Bert talks about how and where he acquired his timber and how it was done during the First World War when he was away. Now, where did you get your timber from? Bought it in the woods locally. Beacon's Bottom was a stone's throw from Bottom Wood, where there were ample supplies of timber for the bodgers. John Scrope, the owner of Wormsley Park, bought the wood in 1737, and it was only sold on from the estate in the 1930s. There remains evidence of saw pits in the wood. There were also many other woods in the area, including those on the Wormsley estate itself. Uh, and how would you buy it? Would you go to a, a, an agent or would you buy it at an auction? Buy it at an auction sale. And where would the auction be held? At Stoughton Church. At a public house, I suppose? Yes. Mm -hmm. The auctions were held during autumn at the 16th century King's Arms in Stoughton Church, 
which was sadly gutted by a fire in October 2021. These were big events for all the related trades. And um, hey, I suppose you've, you've attended many of those auction sales. Oh yes, yes. And did they change at all in your time, or were they always held just the same way? Well, uh, it altered during the war, the First World War, when I was away. It, uh, the timber was allotted to you, about the same as you'd always bought before. Oh, yes. But previously, how did you know what timber you were bidding for? Had you been round the woods and looked at it? Oh, yes. And it was marked, I suppose, wasn't yes, it? Yes, yes. And you would then go to the auction and bid for something you'd inspected and say, That's right. Mm -hmm. The hours were long and there was little leisure time. Uh, what were your working hours like? Well, uh, from seven in the morning till four, eight at night. Mm -hmm. so, Any half day a week? Well, we knocked off a little bit early Saturday. The village cricket, I suppose, occasionally. Yes, yes. Did you play cricket yourself at all? Bert probably didn't have time for playing cricket, although perhaps he watched one of his brothers playing in the local team. In this picture, Albert White, Bert's brother, is second from the left in the middle row. However, Bert did somehow find the time to be a pillar of the community outside work. During the Second World War, he was the local air raid warden and he was also a stalwart of the church. The family often went three times on a Sunday to the Methodist chapel in the morning, a service in the school in the afternoon and up to church in Stoken Church in the evening. There was some friction between the folk at the church and the chapel, so perhaps diplomatically they supported both. When a new church hall was built in St Francis Road nearby, which was associated with the church in Stoken Church, Bert and a brother made a number of artefacts for the church hall, including the cross and altar rail in white wood. The photo shows the consecration of the church hall by the Right Reverend Bishop Allen, Archdeacon of Oxford. Bert is standing on the left-hand side. Bert was an elected lay representative to the parochial council and later appointed as the vicar's warden. The church continued to play an important part in his life. He took communion at home shortly before he died in 1970. The passing away of the last bodger of Beacon's Bottom was truly the end of an era in this little hamlet.